Hey, welcome back. We're at 1 Samuel chapter 12, and today, verses 20 through 25, Saul is the king now, and let's see what happens next. Then Samuel said to the people, Do not fear, you have done all this wickedness, yet do not turn aside from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. And do not turn aside, for then you would go after empty things which cannot profit or deliver, for they are nothing. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you his people. Moreover, as for me, far be it for me that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you, but I will teach you the good and right way. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart, for consider what great things he has done for you. But if you still do wickedly, you shall be swept away, both you and your king. So there's a couple of interesting bits in here. You know, the people are really nervous because... They chose a king and it was the wrong thing and God sent thunder and destroyed their uh, damaged severely anyway, their wheat harvest. Here we have a couple of things that are quite interesting. Some people want to trust that uh, God will never uh, abandon us. God will never abandon his people. He will never abandon his church. Notice here a couple of bits here on this. First he says, the Lord will not, verse 22, the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake. But then we read that last verse, didn't we, 25? But if you still do wickedly, you shall be swept away, both you and your king. So this idea that there's, you can dodge consequences or consequences aren't going to be an issue. God has just decreed it. The church is just going to be, everything's going to be uh, adequate. Boom, we just go forward and, and no stopping us. Doesn't sound quite that way. Again, if you still do wickedly, you will be swept away, you and your king. God will take out the leadership. He will damage you. He will, he will, give you a consequence, a sad consequence for a thing that you really require consequences for. Doesn't say he'll necessarily upend and destroy his whole people, but it does say that the ones who are guilty swept away. So be careful with that. Be very careful. God is on his throne, but God is not mocked. And if we think we can trust in, you know, oh, look, he wouldn't damage his temple. Well, history shows us he wouldn't abandon his people. Well, but history shows us again and again, that sometimes the people are in a way where they need a strong measure against them, and God will not hesitate to do the strong measure when it's time. The other one that I wanted to mention, at least for a moment here, was uh, verse 30, verse 23, as for me, far be it for me that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. Now, that's an interesting one. Samuel was a judge of Israel. He was the last judge, and then we go here to the, the king, the monarchy, the kings, but far be it for me, he said, that I should sin against who? Against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you, the people. So Samuel saw it as his duty before the Lord to pray for the people, to pray for God's people, and to stop praying, to cease from praying, to not be adequate in prayer for God's people would be a sin. Now, I'm not sure how far we want to push this, but it sounds to me like the prayer of God's leaders for God's people is very important, and we should not cease to pray. I pray every single day for the leaders of my church, my denomination. I pray for the leaders of the local uh, part of my denomination. I pray for the leaders in my local churches. I pastor two churches. And, you know, it's just very important, very important that we intervene, we pray to God and ask him to intervene on behalf of his people. So here's a very, very strong call to prayer, so much so that Samuel says he would be sinning if he did not pray. Pretty heavy on his heart and heavy on his nerves because they were, they were off wanting to be like the other nations. But still, it was his duty to pray for them. Let's, you and I pray right now. Dear Father in heaven, Help us to be prayerful people, people that will seek you and pray that you will somehow uh, help our leaders, help our churches to be on the right path in the midst of all the chaos and mayhem in our world. Also, Lord, we pray that we will not trust in things that we shouldn't trust in. We just need to just just back up three steps and just just do what's right. And I know, Lord, your blessing will be upon us as we seek to trust in you and do what's right. Please, Lord, help your people. Help us to trust you more, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. God be with you today in all that you do.